said to my mum before I left home, well, we won't have a uniform. What clothes do I need to take with me? She says, well, if it's what I think a coal mine is, take your oldest. <laughs> and that's what we turned up in. And we were issued with steel toe-capped uh, boots uh, with steel hobnail boots on the soles and uh, a helmet, um, not the plastic ones of today, but it was compressed cardboard, paper mache, um, and a boiler suit. We had to hand the boiler suit back in when we finished. Uh, we kept the helmet and we kept the boots. It's as clear today as it, as it was then, I think you can remember the um, seam that you were in and how you, how you travelled to the seam and what you were doing here. Yeah? Thursday before Friday, got a trading officer. They've got you in a place to do your underground training at Kelly Lee Colliery. And being 19, not 16, you only needed 20 underground shifts for your basic training. School days over, come on. My dad said, I don't mind you coming to the pit, but that goes with your trade. Yeah. You don't want to be in coal like me all your life. So I went as an electrician. My brother was uh, like four years older than me, he just finished his apprenticeship. So he told me <coughs> what it was like, sort of thing, and uh, and you know, start off you know, when you start your you tea lad, aren't you? You're youngest there, so you start making tea for everybody. And then you work your way up. I did my face training and started working on coal face for the first ever time. And again, I must admit, I took to it straight away. I really enjoyed all aspects of mining work at the coal face. There's no doubt about it when you look, you're a young lad, you're only 17 and a half years old, the lads looked after you. I don't think, unless you've actually been underground, you can never imagine what it's, what it's like till you actually go down. Uh, the smells and everything were different. The atmosphere was totally different. Come on, Ben, Jim. It's time to go. Time you are working down below. Time to be handling a big and shovel. You start at the pits today. Time you were learning the collier's job and earning the collier's pay. When I first started in 78, uh, the old coal boards and players were in a transitional period. We were going away from wearing your own clothes, your rags, to provided workwear, looking very similar to this. They give me uh, my overalls and boots, helmet, and what have you, whatever you had to, to wear, belt. My dad went to pit in 1950. He was like 19 years old. And he said, they were issued with a pair of boots and a compressed cardboard out the old time was. We've still got some here at the museum. And you wore it. When he got back to pit, they wear his hat, he was ridiculed and he, they didn't bother the wear. They wore cloth caps with little pieces of metal to put the lamp in. You could buy them. Before that, they used to, they just used to, they used to say rags because they, they used to wear things till they fell off. Things like, you know, waistcoats like jackets that they wore on, on British Rail. They were very popular. So pull sleeves out, wear these like a weight or old waistcoat and put a sew a pocket inside so you could put your snap in one side and your water it other and all your bits in old waistcoats. Some blokes would wear suits, old, old suits that were black, well, blacker than fire back. Yeah. Come on, then.
So, my first job, what is it? Well, bloke takes you up to screening plants. I thought, what does this entail? Well, it entailed being stood at the side of a conveyor belt while it run with coal. While it runs with coal, your pleasant job was to pick the muck out and throw it down a chute. After four hours, you can imagine, you've just about had enough with that. So the bloke comes up to me and says, in another hour's time, there's a bit of something different to do. I thought, hallelujah, we've got a bit of a change. He says, we're doing a muck run. I says, and what's a muck run? He says, well, this time it's going to be muck coming through. I says, yeah, you now pick the muck, go out of the muck. I thought, hallelujah, by gum. And in back of my mind, all I can remember is like listening to teachers saying, yes, lad, if you don't listen, you'll end up down a pit. And that's where I ended up. George Cowles was the first man on the surface who I spent quite a bit of time with, and he was, he was like my dad. And it was a sad day when he died. I, was, I think he taught me more than anybody, apart from my dad. And my dad learned me how to weld. He was in the next shop. I used to nip in and he'd get me out with some metal and he'd show me what to do. Most apprehensive thing about, about going down pit, going in that cage, yeah. Uh, and it, it, to tell you at that time, it, it, your, your stomach went into your throat and that cage went down. Yeah, it was a bit scary, but. Yeah, and then I went it on here. Have you been down here? You get that little drop, don't you? And that travels very, very slow. It's, that's due to taking uh, brakes off, and the weight of the chair it just takes that little bit of slack up in row, and then you've got control of it. Then now, when you were on old steam winder, you got uh, a guy on an anvil pulling steam through, through turbines, and uh, he used to drop like a stone. Oof. School days over, come on then John, time to be getting your pet boots on. On with your sock and your boots and trousers, time you were on your way. Time you were learning the pet man's job and earning the pet man's pay. I've seen a lot of bad accidents and I've had two to miss then. Uh, worst one is how I got my nickname. Kebab. Fell off a Dosco at Rosington and got impaled on a five foot dowel rod. Screaming like a baby. In absolute agony. But all the lads mucked in, got me out of it. Very lucky to survive because the surgeon said we'd it entered. It being pointed, it had shoved the artery to one side. So if you ruptured that, you'd have bled to death underground. But mine has been minus. Got back to work, and my so called best friend had given it a new nickname Kebab. Which I didn't mind, but miners are cruel people. He'd done it for another reason as well. He knew just before I had that accident with Chris and my daughter. Donna. So my poor daughter gets called Donna Kebab. Most kids, my day, went to castles. Museums are off to camp. Even an odd art gallery. Nowhere near fire or choke damp. But not my class. Oh no, not us. They weren't places we would fit. When we went off on our school trip, we went to and down the pit. Might have seen my dad and uncles. They were all colliery men, just like both of my granddads, although they'd retired by then. We went right up to the coal face with ponies, props and much more. Down there in the dark, we clearly saw what our futures had in store. 
one year to go in the classroom. And then the day came around, we stepped from desks and into the cage and dropped and dropped underground. Sadly, what you've got to remember, after minor strike, pit started shooting and industry rapidly closed down. And it weren't the same anymore, if I'm being absolutely truthful, you know. Not only because of strike and that, with the shrinking industry, there's less and less jobs. And every pit you seem to move from, you move from one to another, you get to it, they'd say, it's got 20 years. After three years, it was shut. You'd move to the next one and everybody's talking about saying, let it shut, let us get as redundancy. When you saw such as Rothman and Barnborough, Hickleton shutting down, and all lads scrambling for jobs, I was quite lucky because I went to a job, I went to a pit that got called out for fun. When we joined the industry, in, in my case in the 1960s, uh, you thought you were there for the rest of your working life, you, but obviously things happened which is, we you know. Really. They dangled the carrot, like £10,000 extra on your redundancy if you, if you vote to, to close pit and, and vote went in favour of closing it. So, but personally I'd have, I'd have stopped in coal mines uh, till I retired. Two years of school caretaker. Didn't like that one bit. Cleaning toilet sites every day. Locked toilets. A teacher was a woman. So yeah, it was really, really strange going from a male dominated environment to somewhere where a woman was in charge of you. Not that women shouldn't be in charge, just that it I'd always work with men. I wouldn't advise anybody to ever work in a warehouse toilet to tool. It's just, uh, it's like going back to Victorian times where how, how they treat people, it's, it's ridiculous. At the end of my mining career, very, very sadly, I got very disillusioned with the way it were being run, as it were rapidly closing down. And, 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 and I, I'm not a militant man, but the bosses had really got the upper hands and they were really sort of putting the boot in, if you know what I mean. After exactly 26 years in that pit, I signed off, we finished. Because I've already been offered a job here at the National Coal Mining Museum for England. So I went from doing job to talking about job within a month, because I had a bit of an holiday in between. So very shortly I'll have been here 14 years. So that'll take me, 12th of June, it'll take me up to 40 years. I take them out pit now, you know, you might have 15 or 16 children, you know, 12, 13 years old. You can see that some are very, very bright and there might be just a few that's, that's you know, they're not academically minded, but some of them made absolute fantastic miners. And, and I mean, they were clever as well. If you've got a task to be done, they can do any task. You know, if you say, can you move this building 10 foot to the side, somebody somewhere to come out with an idea. You don't have to wait there a few minutes and say, well, if we do this thinking, well, who'd have believed that? And it don't mean it's bloke with, you know, we're all, all levels and all management papers. It's somebody there just giving a scrap. Think, well, do you think we ought to do this, you know? Oh, who will this great and Oh, who will strain his bending back? And who will work sweat and day? I 
it's my last day. I, I went home, uh, uh, had a couple of beers at the pub, and I can't deny there was a bit of a sigh, thinking a little bit like what you say. I got away with that one, to be honest with you. And you managed to, you know, you managed to survive it. You know what I mean? It, it is. You know. It's like uh, like you've died and gone to heaven compared to working in the warehouse. Yeah. And lucky enough to work here at National Coal Mining Museum. I mean, best, best job in the world for me. You know, from taking kids around at six years old to taking people around at 90 years old. I've taken a lady, not a lady at 100. You know, it's just a great place to be. And, 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 and the lads that work here, they're absolutely fantastic lads. You know, all, every single one of them, you know, it's a great, it's a little bit like what it was like working at the pit. If you go back 40 years ago, you know what I mean? To when I first started life. You know. If I ever had my time to go get, to come again, I'd do exactly the same. I love it. And I, they always said, would you do it again? I said, aye, if I was 16, yeah. If I had a chance at 16, would I do it all again? Yes, I would. The friends you make in this, in, in this industry, or as it was, you're just friends for life. You, you look after each other. Who will cry when the roof caves in?